two, one, go. Global missions and the local church. It's a topic that many of us are familiar with. Um, something we've probably sat and listened to for hours um, on end all together. And even now, just with me like bringing it up, you're probably tempted to roll your eyes or tune me out. Um, I'm asking just that you spend a few minutes listening and considering what I have to say. Um, have we actually given much thought to this? Like, what is this? What's this? And what part does this play in that? Um, how many of us have really yeah, considered like what part we play in that, um, in missions? Why consider being a part at all? Like why consider um, wanting to reach the nations? Why consider wanting to like, spread the good news? Um, man, like in short, <laughs> if for no other reason than we, I mean, like, Christ left us with his parting words to go and tell. Um, we all know it. We're all familiar with it. We've heard it many thousands of times. The church probably is more familiar with this passage than with any other passage in Scripture. Um, the Great Commission, like Matthew 28, 18 through 20, like, to be specific. Um, one of the most well-known passages today, like, hands down. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. In light of this command and the reality of the gospel, the church's involvement in missions ought to be a given, one would think. Um, however... It's not. And why is that? Um, maybe one reason is just as simple as ignorance, that we don't know what to do. And we can look at the statistics, we can look at the numbers, we can look at um, just what's happening around the world and get so overwhelmed that we don't do anything, that we don't even consider um, being a part of it because, like, man, we're just one person um, or we're just a small group of people. Like, what difference is it going to make? Um, yeah, maybe we are motivated. Maybe we just don't know where to start. Um, yeah. The world and the people in it, um, the cultures, um, people groups, all of this is, is changing. Um, you can't, we just we can't stop it. The world is always changing. Um, as people were thirsting for more of everything, like more technology, more knowledge, uh, just more, like more and more everything. <laughs> um, as the world and all of these things change, missions changes. Missions is changing to meet the needs of people all over. And we just, it doesn't work to just stick to some model that was used hundreds of years ago to reach people. And that's kind of scary, um, kind of overwhelming, um, just to think that things are changing. <laughs> and that can keep us um, just where we are, keep us from getting involved. But although this is kind of new and slightly intimidating, um, although missions is changing, the long-term objectives are staying the same just to spread the gospel. Um, something we call <laughs> the good news. Um, and just to take that, like, all over and to tell people about what Christ has done, about who he is, about how they need him, and establishing thriving churches. Um, 
sharing the gospel as Christ works through us, drawing people to himself, saving people, and then discipling them, teaching them um, just I mean, how to follow him and how to, to go and then tell others about him. Um, yeah, that's always been the, the goal or the mission of missions, and that doesn't change. It never will, or it shouldn't. Um, so just keeping that in mind. Um, and all of those statistics vary depending on where you look. The uh, um, number of like, people groups that aren't reached that don't have the gospel, um, that aren't being told the good news. It ranges, but it's about 6,900 um, altogether, and then 1,500 or so of those aren't even being engaged. Like they're not even, yeah, we're not even making moves necessarily towards them. Um, so yeah, like. It's a big number, and then to think that that's just people groups. Behind that number, there are so many people, like billions of people. So for me to look at a number, or to look at like even the word, like billions, <laughs> like impossible, I can't do it, I'm one person. Um, it's too much for me, it's too much for like you, it's too much for you, but thankfully we don't have to do it um, just alone, like we're not being asked to do it alone. Um, we get to do it together. Um, I mean, like, what is the church? Um, is it just like a building? <laughs> like, is it a group of people getting together on Sunday mornings and like they're all dressed up and like <laughs> happy and like they're singing and like they're reading the Bible <laughs> or is it a group of like collective individuals united under Christ or in Christ with one purpose, um, meant to, to be built up and then poured out. Um, and like, knowing this, like, where do we even start? Like, it, it's overwhelming, and now we know that, okay, we have a few other people, and we're not really alone, but, like, that's still a big number, like, what do we do? How how are we supposed to make a difference? Um, when we actually sit down and consider these things, we quickly begin to see that there are a myriad of ways to go about all of this. Um, there are gospel sharers who are directly involved with people in another culture, like telling them this in their own heart language, and whether that's living among them or whether that is um, using a trade skill like man there's a need for electricians and doctors um, but yeah they're they're working cross-culturally to share this with people um, and then there are people stateside like there are people like on the home front you could say and who are coming behind them and helping them to go and tell. Um, they're co-laborers, they're people holding the ropes, as William Carey um, said. He gave that illustration. Uh, so the people going, the people sending others, equally important, like equally vital, equally necessary. Um, yeah, all like the church working together on mission. Um, from my limited experience and from like multiple conversations with missionaries on the field, uh, currently serving, have been for years, um, loneliness, depression, exhaustion, and like a host of other um, 
just discouraging things. It's a normal part of life. It's such a real issue um, and one that we're not really willing to think about or really discuss because we think maybe they're just put together, like their lives are, are fine, like they're having a, a grand old time, they're, you know, in nice places, and they are doing like a really cool thing, um, but man, it's so hard, so hard, um, and like, they don't, they want to quit a lot of times, they want to, to go back home, um, <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's tempting do that um, but like that's exactly where like the local church can come in um, caring for the people that they're sending actually and genuinely caring for them um, you know if there are people stuck in a well and there are people who are willing to go into the well and if ropes have been provided you have almost everything you need but if you don't have people willing to hold the ropes so people can climb into the wall. You're missing something, um, and who like who's going to hold them? Um, when missionaries are losing heart, who's going to encourage them to persevere? Who's going to remind them of truth, if not their brothers and sisters who are home? Um, so like as we're here, just in the states, wherever we are, um, as we're like diving into the Word of God, which we like happen to have in our own language um, as we're like pitting money in an offering plate that's passing by as we are joining together in prayer like are we truly considering our involvement in this our our part our involvement in spreading this all over um, aware of the need are are you are we each vital members of the body of Christ owning the need and engaging with it, engaging in it. Um, and that's locally, like right where we're at, and globally. And God's given us all we need, including just one life. Um, the author of Ecclesiastes says it this way, um, that life is a vapor, that it's here, and then it's gone. And in conclusion, like that's all... I want to challenge you with is to humbly consider these things, um, missions and the church's involvement in that, um, what we're supposed to be doing, this number that we can't do alone, but that we're not meant to, to face alone. Um, like consider all of that in light of eternity. Um, Albert Muller said, we cannot add time to our lives here on earth. We can only exercise stewardship over the time we're given. And he's right. Like, are we content with wasting it away? And in the words of somebody else, uh, John Stott, it costs to be a Christian, but it costs much more not to be. And life is too short and eternity is far too long to fritter it all away on nothing or on things that don't mean anything in the long run. Um, and man, like, in light of what Christ has done for us, like the love that he's shown for us, why in the world would we want to fritter it away? Um, fear can't keep us um, from going, and it shouldn't. Like His love compels us, if nothing else. So thanks for listening.